The world of work is changing, but why is it changing? How is it changing? And what should you and your organization do about it? Hi, my name is Jacob Morgan. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and futurist, and on this show, I'm going to help answer all of these questions. Join me as I go inside some of the world's most forward-thinking companies to tour their offices and interview their executives and employees. Welcome to the Future of Work. Today I'm visiting the offices of Cisco in San Jose, California. Cisco has over 70,000 employees around the world and it was actually founded one year after I was born in 1984. I was born in 1983. Now most people think of Cisco as simply a networking company, but the reality is that Cisco does a lot more. There's some really cool technology that Cisco is involved with. They do networking, they do hardware, they do software, and they are actually trying to empower the Internet of Things and the Internet of Everything. So we're going to speak with Fran, their Chief People Officer, we're going to speak with some of their employees, get a tour of their offices and find out what Cisco thinks about the future of work. I'm really excited because I'm expecting some really awesome technologically advanced things from Cisco. Let's go take a look. Are you a person? Hi, how are you? Yes, I am. <laughs> so you're somewhere in the building? Yes, I am. For Sitting. purposes, I'm, I'm in this building. So I'm assuming that uh, if I ask you if you think technology has a big part of the future of work, you're going to say yes. Of course, I'll say yes. You look like it's very high def, like it's very crisp and clear wherever you're sitting. So do you have the same uh, similar type of setup where you are? Yes, I do. Like this giant screen with a giant camera? Yes. So anytime anybody comes in, do you just greet them and say hi and help them? And That is correct. I'm actually the virtual concierge for Building 10. Ah. So, so what, sort of, what sort of things do you help with? I assist guests with um, arranging transportation, making dinner reservations. What? Uh, and printing documents, yeah. So you can do dinner reservations and... So where would a document get printed if I needed a document print? Uh, we would print a set up right below the desk area. That is so weird. <laughs> it's like a, a real life hologram person. What was your name, by the way? My name is Cesar. Cesar, what's your last name? Cazelli. Cesar Cazelli. Well, thank you very much, uh, virtual Cesar Cazelli. Thank you. <laughs> See you later. Have a good day. See you later. So I'm here with Francisco Espana, an IT manager here at Cisco, who's going to walk us through a little bit of their offices and showcase some of their cool technology that they use to actually get work done. It's all yours. Welcome to our building. All right, the first experience that we have when we get to a building, one of the things that we introdu introduce is the concept of a kiosk, right? Which is a touch panel interaction where we can make a few things. We can look for people, we can actually look for resources beyond workplace spaces. We can look at uh, coffee areas, we can look at common areas that we want to uh, uh, see the resources that we have available, and we can find people as well. So how would I, how would I use this? So as you can see here, you have a few options. You, you can decide, okay, first let's see what, what's, what has been happening in the building. We can see the last interaction, of who has been in, who has been out. We can see if you know that you're meeting someone here, like Rob, who's checked in in a certain, in a certain room, you can decide, okay, well, I don't know where it is, so just let me know how do I reach Rob and how do I get there, right? So this saves us the time of, especially on new buildings, of how do I find people, how do I find resources. Mm. The same happens when I look for things, uh, like in this case, uh, looking for a, a restroom or a, a coffee area in the building. It tells me exactly where it is, and in this case, it's just right here, um, and gives me the experience of visually understanding where I'm located and how to reach it. The second part is, if I'm in coming to work, what do I want to do? We have several types of uh, workspaces. We have, work, we have normal desks, we have APRs, which are rooms that are not bookable, but you can reserve for yourself to have a little bit more privacy in this open space environment. Then we have the normal conference rooms. So if I want to decide, I just want a normal workspace, it tells me right away visually what are the available workspaces that we have here. And so I can just decide that I want the, this one for the day or the afternoon or the hour and decide, okay, let's check it in. It's mine for, for this moment and off I go, I, I can go to it. I can decide either if I use it already, I can, I can, I can decide to go straight there or decide to have the route again. Right? Other things that we can do, is look at the conference rooms in the same model, which ones are being used, which ones are not being used, which ones are soon, soon to be available, and book them through here, or get the directions there. And the same for finding people and the, the other privacy rooms that we have. 
So this, we started to develop this uh, three months ago. Wow. So what we found is that, yes, the, the workspace transformation, what happens is that we, we've been seeing historically that we implement into all this fun in the office, right? Mm -hmm. The nice workspace where people feel more at home, that old workspace of the past where things are just a box, where you go, you work nine to five and gone, that's over, right? Yeah, we yeah. had a lot of influence from millennials, from people coming uh, with different perspectives of what is to work. People want a lifestyle at work. Yeah. And we saw a lot of success in other companies about how to make it fun, how to make it uh, personalized in terms of looking more like a house, looking more like sure. a common environment. But yeah. what we, we are today, it's an inflection point of the fun becomes now smart. And what we want to do with it is making smart and make interactions uh, and create all these contextual adaptive experiences based on what you want to do and who you are. Because the reality is the network knows everything about you. Sure. So what we want to do is make the network work for us instead of us working for the network. Yeah, makes sense. So before that, what was it like? You would just come in and everything would be manual and just... Well, just a normal typical office. You would come in, you don't know where people are. You try to find someone, you walk around trying to find where they are. You don't know what available meeting rooms uh, you have. You waste time before, you know, when you're five minutes late already to the meeting and start running and trying to figure out the place to sit to have a video endpoint. Today, if you want technology or if you don't want it, we already can suggest you the experience that you want to have. If you have a remote call with someone, we know who, who are the rooms that have technology that enable you to have a better experience through telepresence, for so, example. So the building kind of guides you and it helps recommend the best Absolutely. environment. Absolutely. So we work. want to create the concept of a virtual assistant in the, so in it's the a building. smart building. And we want the building to talk to you. And we don't want to invent too many new experiences. We want to reuse everything we have. Uh, I am clients that we use already on the enterprise, maybe Jabber, maybe Spark. We want the building to be able to ping you just like I ping you, mm -hmm. right? And create experiences around that. That's Examples nice, of that is people with parking spots that charge their electrical car. We want to be able to ping you and say, look, Jacob, you have 10 minutes to go and fill your car. We reserve the spot for you. If you don't show up then, well, we're going to take it out. Oh, so it tells you. That's what we want to go next. Uh -huh. These are our what we what we call our DMPs, which is just a content management TV that uh, it constantly communicates, right? Communication is number one. Uh, it's, it's super important for us to have this transparency on the company. And what we want with this, it's not only to communicate to Cisco, but communicate to you. We want to make the building feel that you feel that the building is here for you, as I, as I want to have the feeling that the building is here for me, for me, right? Not a one size fits all. So we want to make this contextual and understand, okay, jo Jacob, you're here. Can I push information that is relevant to yourself and also help you a little bit and understanding, look, you're late five minutes for your next meeting. The most, uh, the, the available meeting room that, that is the closest is here. Go there and start navigating through your mobile phone. So how, how would this do that? We do this with Cisco technology uh, through in, uh, integration with location-based services. So how would, like, what's an example of how this would work? Like, An example of how this would work would be that we detect that you are close to it. So how, do, through today, the badge? Today we have, we just installed it. We we are starting to work on it with the, with the technology that we have. We still okay, so don't it's have, not done no, yet? No, no, no. This okay. is what's coming next. Right? Okay. Today we already put them here, so we start generating content. Today is uh, just common content for everyone in the uh, enterprise. Okay. And the next step that we are looking for in the next quarter is to make it contextual through integration of our location-based services with our uh, access points and MSC and CMX. Would solutions. it use you like your badge? So no, we're going to use your mobile phone uh, either through Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. So when you walk by, it'll know you're walking by and it'll display Correct. something for you. And we look at integration of Outlook, calendars, meetings, information, oh, RSS right. feeds that you're looking for. And we always even want to elevate the experience to be able to be able to do video calls through here right away. If you're meeting someone, can I click on it and say, look, Jacob, I'm five minutes. Should we meet there or I'm five minutes late? Can you hold and so on? That's pretty neat. So this is one of the one of what we call our audio privacy rooms that we can reserve for a period of time. Right? What we see here is we introduce the concept of nameplates as well. So you in an open space environment, which is very important, you can right away see the present status of a build uh, of, a, of a room. So we know if it's been occupied or not. And we can see an example uh, down there that we don't need to walk that far and spend a couple of more seconds to try to find a space and we know exactly where to go and the ones that are available. What do we did with this? 
It's all, uh, of course, PoE, so we can control. Well, controlled by uh, uh, PoE, so we can actually have what's PoE? Power over Ethernet, right? So we can actually control everything that happens here in terms of lights and change, and have the network have be intelligent enabled to make those decisions for mm. us, right? And so what we have here as well, you can check in either using the kiosk, check in manually today, or even using a QR, a QR code in our app as well, right? And so an example of that is that now I'm going to decide, well, this room is mine. You saw a couple of things happening, right? It tells me who the room is. It tells me my presence online, in this case, my Jabber client. And if you notice, it changes the room lights to, that light for, to, uh, to the preferred settings I have for me. I like to work in the dark. Some people like it a little bit lighter. But part of the experience is if I have someone like you guys here, I can then override all of that, right? And decide through my phone, okay, let me increase the brightness. You guys are here, so we need to work on something. So you're controlling the room with your more, phone. And start controlling the room with my phone and decide all the colors and so on. What is my preferred setting? We also want, and we're still working on embedding all of the technology that we saw here. You guys have a telepresence unit here. As soon as we start using it, we also set like the lights to the preferred light settings to have a better video experience on the other side. So yeah, well, but here it is, if you want to film it, is an example of, you know, an office that is uh, no one's desk, but it's their desk for, for, for the day, right? And so basically, the way that we saw, eco well, sharing economy is disturbing a bunch of markets. Sure. The same in the workspace, right? Everything becomes shared resources. Hmm. And so we see an evolution to, 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 to have a better uh, productivity and more, uh, and more collaboration in the end of the day to, to, to make us faster, right? So are there no dedicated spaces at Cisco usually? No. So we don't have offices, you don't have your offices anymore, and this goes up the chain uh, in the enterprise. From, so a, from an intern, from an executive, no one has a space, and you actually have to reserve your space for the day or for a period of time and start interaction in your team and so on. So if I, let's say, I worked here from nine to five, every time I would come, I could sit in a different space, work Absolutely. in a different area, I don't have like, a cube or no, because a desk. what we do that is model to your work. You don't necessarily always work with the same person. You work with you have two, three projects, through the three, two, three different teams. So we shape the work, the the work environment, the workspace to your work. Mm. And as you, as your interactions change, we also want you to change with that. And here, if we see if we were looking and we were both in the same team and looking for a place to work and something, we could see visually right away what would be a place for us to have some work and so on. We keep informing people, constantly passing the message. In this case, you saw this already before, saying what are the new experiences in the building, and uh, and later on as well, pushing whatever is coming next, mm -hmm. right? And we want, we really want to break the experience, right? In reality, yeah. right? I mean, uh, we have we have seen enough. We have seen enough uh, feedback from our from our employees and so on 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 having. I never seen this room actually on having poor experiences, and we want to solve it, but want to solve it through the network. So this is pretty neat. Yeah. So we have uh, some of these as well, which are more informal. It's more for our you know one on one small team meetings, discussion, sure. informal kind of environments, and so on. But always connected to anywhere in the world, right? Yeah. That's the key. For us. Hmm. So, you know, for some companies, they focus on experience as far as, like, uh, office design, and they do crazy architecture, and <laughs> they bring in perks like massages and all that sort of fun stuff. It sounds like for you guys, experience is more around the technology that enables you to work in different ways. Yes, yeah, so we have a little bit of the fun part and the relaxing part of work. But we understand that, you know, we're pivoting to this new smart experiences more than the fun experiences, yeah. right? Because we're focusing into like things. Smart over fun. Is it, we're focusing in two things, user experience and productivity. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, I really no, appreciate you, your time. That was great. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I'm here with Caitlin Johnson, who is a senior manager over at Cisco's Integrated Health, and she's going to show us the Life Connections part of Cisco. Hi, good afternoon. Welcome to Cisco and welcome to Life Connections. We have approximately 5,000 members. Um, they check in right here at the desk. They just use their badge to swipe in and they walk into the facility, which is also very high tech. We use what you call TechnoGym, which is internet enabled equipment. So while you're working out, not only can you watch television sitting on the internet, but you can also check your email, check the CEC. You can also do a company meeting. So Cisco, um, what is it, Cisco now, Cisco TV. Thank you, you can log right in and I'll show you that. Okay. So the fitness center, and we can send you these stats, is 45,000 square feet. I would so just is eat the child and go to the cafeteria, that's all I would do. Yep. 
And then um, the health center is about 24,000 square feet. Wow. So thank you for coming to our World Class Life Connections Health Center. It's a pleasure to meet you. And um, we're going to continue servicing our Cisco employees and their families. And how we're doing this is continuing to expand the Life Connections brand. We're building one at the RTP campus, North Carolina, which opens on October 12th. Well, thank you very much. OK. So who are you and what do you do at Cisco? <laughs> Hi, I'm Francine Katsudis, and I lead HR at Cisco. Very cool. And we had the opportunity to team up on a couple of things in the past, so we that have. was a lot of fun. Uh, so I wanted to get your perspective on what you think the future of work looks like. Yeah, I think the, the future of work is incredibly exciting for us. I, I think the, the main thing that I think about is the agility and how we work. And I think what that means is that from an employee perspective, we're going to see a lot of themes around flexibility. Mm -hmm. We're going to see a lot of themes around learning and how we create a unique experience. And so I think those are some of the trends that not only Cisco is playing with, but I think all of us are playing with yeah. as it relates to getting the best talent. Now, one thing I found interesting is that your, your title used to be Chief Human Resource Officer, and now <laughs> yeah. it became Chief People Officer. It did. And I've been noticing a couple organizations making that shift. Obviously, it's intentional, so what of is the thinking behind that? I think what it symbolizes is that there's a big change within our profession as well. And I think we're looking less and less at the system and looking more and more at the people, which by the way, leads you back to the system in many cases. But I think it's uh, intentional for us around the focus on our employees. And uh, we launched right about a year ago, this time of the year, uh, we launched a people deal. Mm -hmm. which was our commitment to our employees that we were going to focus on what we offer and what we expect in return. And the belief is that when you have that clarity, it allows you to move a lot faster and more clearly as a company. Yeah. And so it was also a way for us to build off some of the commitments that we've made. Hmm. I've also seen a lot of discussion happening around the employee experience. Yeah. And I feel like that's a new topic, or relatively new. You know, yeah. 10 years ago, I don't know how much conversation there was around that. Curious to hear your take on the employee experience and why is that such a hot topic now? So the why is kind of easy and I think it is the emergence of social media because today the passive candidate rules. Yeah. And so more and more companies have to be attractive because someone's going to tap your employee on the shoulder regardless of who they are exactly. and where they are. And so I think more and more companies have to focus on what their experience is going to be. For us it's been a big shift. Um, and what I mean by that is within HR, we now have a competency around experience and really? focus on employees. And that's different for us. And now when I look at the programs that I'm running, I'm starting with the experience. I think in HR, many organizations used to be focused on risk and compliance. Yes. And when you put <laughs> that to the side and you say I'm focused on the experience and leadership, it, it changes our roles pretty dramatically. Yeah. What do you think about millennials? So, um, I love that question, by the way. <laughs> so, I'm a millennial, so I have to ask. So, you know, when I look at our population as an example, over the last 18 months, 60% uh, of our hires have been millennials. Wow. And so, uh, they're definitely a demographic that we're committed to. I think what's fascinating is, and we talked about this before, at times we focus on millennials, and um, what conversation we're not having is how do you look at the varied demographics of your workplace and how do you understand what is most important to millennials because we do and if they're 60 percent I need to know oh, that. Absolutely. But then what am I doing for all the other demographics of the workforce and so we're playing around with concepts around how do I create benefits that are most meaningful to every demographic of the workforce? What career experiences are the most meaningful? And so I would say it's absolutely a priority but we want to look at it holistically as well. Hmm. What advice would you give for employees that are watching this? So not executives or CEOs or managers, but you know, just regular entry level or junior employees that are thinking about how to stay relevant as the workplace keeps changing. What do you tell them? So the first thing I would say is I think it's important for all of us at every stage in our career to really continue to invest in our, our learning and our development. I think that how we do that is changing. Uh, the other thing that I would say is at, at Cisco, something that we're really focusing on is movement. And so I'm a big believer that the more and more that you move, especially within a large enterprise like Cisco, 
the better it's going to be for you. And it's funny, Jacob, because sometimes I think you have a move and you go, yeah, I don't want to do this. Yeah. But that's a big learning too, as far as what you don't want to do. And so I would say, focus on learning. I would say focus on movement. And then I'd say focus on brand as well. I think it's really important right now in HR, my folks are going through and looking at have we kept our LinkedIn profiles current? Like, what is our brand externally? Yeah. What are we doing? Because I think that's going to be important for our employees as well. What about this idea of hierarchy and command and control? <laughs> I feel like more and more organizations that I speak with are saying that hierarchies are on their way out. A command and control is an outdated management practice. But a lot of organizations still really struggle with getting rid of that. Um, how do you overcome that, that sort of mentality? Where do you think we're going to go with this idea of command and control and hierarchy? Yeah, I think you said it right, which is there, there's a mindset element to mm -hmm. it as well. And so similar to the discussion around what your workspace looks like, I, I think starting with the work, it's going to guide us around what the right level of management style should be. I, I think it's going to continue to have um, variation in that it should. Um, for us, more and more, we are moving away from the hierarchy. We talk a lot about things like bottoms-up innovation. Mm -hmm. And to enable bottoms-up innovation, what starts to happen is that your managers, they're more and more of a coach. Yeah. And they're really kind of supporting the innovation that's coming up and helping their teams move forward and engage with customers. And so we have some really great examples of where roles and expectations of leaders are changing. So I, I do think that's a big trend. I, yeah. I think that we're going to continue to see that. Again, I think concepts like servant leadership is definitely a wave of the future. Um, when I think each of us think about the type of leader that we want to work for, probably command and control isn't the first thing that no, comes to mind. Nobody, <laughs> nobody thinks about that. That's right. That. What about this whole idea of contractors versus full-time employees? You know, it's hard to go online nowadays to and, and not see some sort of article that says uh, you know uber is going to take over employees are dead everyone's going to be a freelancer do you think that's going to happen i think it's definitely a trend I, I think it's a trend we have to prepare for it's funny i sometimes get em employee emails around things like why do i only ha get one job <laughs> like why can't i have more than one job within cisco within cisco and we're playing with that right now. And so one of the things that we're looking at, uh, we have something called the stretch assignment marketplace mm -hmm. where folks can opt in and say, hey, in addition to the work that I'm doing, I want to try something in marketing. That's an area that I want to move to. So we've had that in place for years. What we're starting to play around with now is can we start to put a price on a body of work hmm. and allow employees to bid for that work? And so in essence, they truly will come to a place where they could have multiple roles within Cisco. And so it's something that we're going to pilot and experiment and see what we learn. So who are you and what do you do at Cisco? So my name is Alice Tang and I'm the Vice Manager with our Enterprise Products and Solutions Group. And what do you think about the future of work? When I think about the future of work, I see globalization, digitalization, um, mobility, connectiveness. I mean, that's what I see. I just see people really working um, across the country, across the globe. Yeah. Like, I definitely see that. Do you see the status quo changing at all as far as how work gets done? I would say yes. I mean, we how's are. How is it changing? Well, I mean, especially working in a high tech company, I see, like, for instance, like, I use my phone all the time, my smartphone, mm -hmm. um, to connect friends and family co-workers to find out what's a good place to eat, to check my schedule, sure. um, check my my status on yeah, my Yeah, we Fitbit. both have. I see a lot of people here, they got the, you know, Fitbit. Yeah, I'm trying or, to do my um, 10,000 steps at least, trying to get back to healthy habits. There you go. I mean, that's what I see, I mean, even in, yeah, from my experience. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, what advice would you give to a manager or an executive that's watching this, that's thinking about the future of work and how to create a great place to work? The first thing that comes to mind is just for a leader to be authentic. Mm -hmm. We can definitely um, see through when someone's not being authentic. Yes. What word or phrase do you think sums up the future of work? If you had to think of a word or phrase, what pops into your mind? Connect, connectedness. Connectedness. Connectivity. That's what, I, yeah, I just see the word connect. Yeah. And uh, obviously you're a millennial, I'm a millennial. We both have heard about and have read about all the negative stereotypes about millennials. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think about all that? Are you lazy and entitled and, and privileged? I do not feel that I'm lazy, entitled, or privileged. Um, I think what the media stereotypes, how it portrays is totally 
different than my own experience. Yeah. For instance, I am a um, first college graduate in my family, also the oldest sibling, um, oldest cousin of 20. So, I, so there's already a lot of pressure to do well and also like inspire, you know, my sisters and my cousins to be true to the, be true to who they are, you know, mm -hmm. um, explore, be curious, stay curious. Yeah. Um, for instance, I, I think I, I didn't really, I didn't have a mentor. It's kind of like along the way through school, like my parents, you know, they could only help me out to, of course. you know, they gave me this love and support. I think that's what I needed to continue on my dreams. But in terms of like career advice, I wouldn't say that my parents, you know, I didn't have the privilege to yeah. have that. I had to go seek it. So yeah. And I would say I'm not lazy and just that's good. watching my parents, you know, work two jobs, raising three kids. Not easy. Not easy. And I move around a lot. We live in Silicon, San Jose, you know, so yeah. it's not, not a <laughs> cheap place to live in. Sure, sure. So, yeah. What advice would you give to employees that are watching this that are thinking of how to stay relevant as the workplace is changing and adapting? What, um, to, oh, to an employee? Yeah, so if an employee was watching this that's thinking about how to stay relevant as the workplace keeps changing, what advice would you give them? Um, I mean, for me, it's continuing to grow and learn about yourself. I mean, it yeah. really comes down to that. What about for an executive or a manager? Uh, what advice would you give them to create a great place to work? To be vulnerable, to be authentic, to be a human being. I mean, I think some people, they separate how they really feel. Yeah. Um, but it shows. I mean, we're not, as human beings, we can, we can sense that. So I think it's important to showcase how you how you feel yeah to an employee and uh, obviously you're a millennial i'm a millennial we both have heard about and have read about all the negative stereotypes about millennials mm -hmm. uh what do you think about all that are you lazy and entitled and and privileged? i do not feel that i'm lazy entitled or privilege um i think what the media stereotypes how it portrays is totally different than my own experience. Yeah. For instance, I am a um, first college graduate in my family, also the oldest sibling, um, oldest cousin of 20. So I, so there's already a lot of pressure to do well and also like inspire, you know, my sisters and my cousins to be true to the, be true to who they are, you know, mm -hmm. um, explore, be curious, stay curious. Yeah. Um, for instance, I, I think I, I didn't really, I didn't have a mentor. It's kind of like along the way through school, like my parents, you know, they could only help me out to, of course. you know, they gave me this love and support. I think that's what I needed to continue on my dreams. But in terms of like career advice, I wouldn't say that my parents, you know, I didn't have the privilege to yeah. have that. I had to go seek it. So yeah. And I would say I'm not lazy and just that's good. watching my parents, you know, work two jobs, raising three kids. Not easy. Not easy. So who are you and what do you do at Cisco? My name is Dana Baker and I work in global business services. What do you think of millennials at work? So as a millennial myself, yep. I think we are very underutilized. I think in general, in a company that's a little bit more senior like Cisco is, we are not tapped into enough. Interesting. So you think that we have, or that millennials have skills that they can contribute, but they aren't being called on enough to contribute those skills. Exactly. If you were to think of a word or phrase that describes or sums up the future of work, what pops into your head? I think the idea of being without limits as, you know, I mean, we both, we were just talking, we have, um, we have features where we can track our steps, our sleep, our time. Well, that can translate into so many more things. It's going to be no time before we carry everything on here instead of our laptops. And I think that's the future. That's where everything's going. Mm. But I also think that in-person communication is very, very important for millennials. I hear it time and time again from the millennials that I talk to that FaceTime is huge for them. Having this interaction and connection, having the ability to empathize with somebody, see their yeah. facial reactions. Not just telepresence, but actually face to face. Yes, you know, telepresence, I say, is so close. It is so close to being there. And if we could create 
the ability to have a telepresence type of experience where mm -hmm. that would be always on and you could just tap whoever rather than going to a special room and having a special meeting. Sure. I think that would definitely create the same type of experience with somebody as if you were having an in-person conversation. Now, we, we were talking about our, our wearable devices yes. earlier. <laughs> what do you think about wearable, wearable devices in the workplace? Relating to work material? Yeah, so do you think wearable devices have a place at work? Definitely, yes. I mean, if I can carry around what I need document-wise in my mobile, you know, in my wearable device, that would be amazing. I wouldn't have to necessarily always have a laptop on me or a phone even. Yeah. And I could almost be more present with that person yeah. if I didn't have to have a screen in front of me as well. Sure. What do you think about open offices versus closed offices? I think there's a time and place for both. I personally really enjoy the open office, although that's all I've ever known. Yeah. And the reason I like it is because there's so many times that I'm like, if I could only ask somebody this tiny little question, I could get my work done. Well, no, they're busy. I don't see them. I'm not going to do it. And I spend so much more time churning on that one little thing. Whereas if I could just go, excuse me, can I ask you a question? It's yeah. done. And much I easier. can be more produ productive. However, I'm a loud talker. Yeah. And I feel like I'm distracting to other people. And as well, I hear other people who are loud. So there is limitations where I think it is necessary to have a quiet room to go and, and have a conversation that is either confidential or just if you know you're a loud talker. So yeah. there's a time and place, but I think having my senior director sit right next to me and being able to swing my chair and be like, hey, how's it going? Pretty in cool. Between, in between meetings, I mean, that's, that's, that's priceless, yeah. you know? And so it makes me feel a lot more connected. Sure. When you think of a manager or an executive or a leader, what qualities or characteristics do you think are important to them when thinking about the future of work? Trust. Trust and respect are huge. And I mean, I've looked at this and studied this for over a year now with my specific group of team and trust trumps everything because if you have that trust relationship you can be more creative they can back off and do what they need to do and not micromanage and worry about what you're doing and i mean i get to be creative i get to do what i want where i want how i want to do it because i know sounds like a good setup but i but i've earned that trust yeah. I, I they know that i do good work it's not just something handed to me i i had to earn it so having that, that relationship with my manager, with my manager's manager, of they know that what I'm doing is a value, even if it may not affect that exact direct mm. team. I mean, it allows me to do things like what I'm doing right now and, and chatting with you, because this is, it ignites my passion. Yeah. What do you think the role of a manager is when you think about the future of work? What should their function be? Enabling you to do what you need to do. So step in when they need to, but also let you run with things and also be somewhat of a sponsor for you and your ideas and help you facilitate where something may go if you don't know how like to it. get something done. I like it. Perfect. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. I spent the past couple hours visiting the offices of Cisco. I met Cesar, who is indeed a real person. We got a chance to speak with some of their employees. We spoke with Fran, of course, who I have uh, had the opportunity to work with on several occasions. And it was fascinating to hear Cisco's perspective on how they think the workplace is changing. Everything from millennials to technology to open offices, you name it, we covered it. Out of all the companies that we visited, out of all the offices that we've seen, I can safely say that Cisco's is the most technologically advanced. And they're doing some really amazing things when you think about digital workplace transformation. I'm very excited to see what the future of work is going to look like, especially when you have cool stuff like this going on. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the Future of Work show. To sponsor an episode or to have your company featured in the show, email me jacob at thefutureorganization.com. I'll see you in the future.